Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Thank you all the members, all the Patreons. Make sure to subscribe, uh, trying to get to 50,000 subscribers and let's get into it. So today we're going to fly out the Lazur, but we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between the Saul and the Lazur. A lot of people don't know exactly what it is um, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. So let's hop in, right? Uh, yeah, it's... Abyss, okay? It's a MiG-21 Abyss as a normal one. So, the MiG-21 Abyss, the Abyss Saul, and the Abyss Lazur, they are technically the same aircraft, okay? They're all Abyss models, but they have different packages of, in real life, obviously, let's talk a little bit about real life first. Uh, they have different uh, packages of avionics, of uh, navigation systems or autopilots or stuff, stuff like that depending on country depending on usage on air force on whatever the reason is right uh, and yeah as i said we have three models of the beast uh, in the game we have the normal beast the beast soul and the beast lazur the normal beast Apparently, it has a very limited autopilot system. That would be the main difference. It would be just a standardized at the VVS version. Or the VVS is the uh, Soviet Air Force, obviously. And it's just standard. It's just a normal MiG-21 piece, okay? Uh, the Saul version uh, had a different type of autopilot system. It's not too fancy, okay, but it is an autopilot system that would help the pilot do some things. For example, one of them is to actually recover the aircraft. You could actually just click one button and the aircraft would just stabilize itself on a dive or anything like that that it was doing. Before that, it was just going to stabilize itself and if the pilot ever gets uh, you know, lost, uh, especially in like IFR conditions, IMC conditions in uh, inside clouds and stuff, and bad weather in general, you will feel disoriented and then the pilot could click that button and basically the aircraft would level itself off. Uh, that's one of the things that it can do. Other thing is the automatic ILS. Um, some versions of the Saul model had uh, the ability to actually do uh, approaches semi semi automatically you st still needed to actually touch a little bit on the stick to actually do the little bits of the final approach uh, when you are going to touch um, the ground but beyond that is it's just uh, almost completely automatic right and even like for uh you know just a normal navigation systems you could you could say to follow a, a VOR or to follow something like that. So that would be the Saul, okay? The Saul system. Of course, we have many models of the Saul system, so it depends on the year of the aircraft, it depends on the Air Force, the package that they are buying and other the things like that, right? Um, and then we have the Lazur. The Lazur had a, a similar system of autopilot, but the main thing is that it had a different autopilot with a much more modern and integrated system together with the GCI. The GCI would be the ground controller, okay? Controlling the aircraft for interceptions and other things happening in the battlefield. So we would have like an AWACS, basically, right? You know how an AWACS work. Um, and the GCI for the Soviets, it is basically the same, but with... A ground control radar so it changes a little bit from the, the aux but it's basically the same and basically all the countries have gcis anyway right uh, for defending their homeland uh, iraq had it uh, the soviets even the us so it, it's it's the thing is we are kind of used to looking at AWACSs, but the more common thing is gcis okay ground controls so yeah but anyway, uh, continuing with the Lazur. The Lazur would be basically the same aircraft, but with this new system of having just a, basically a, a autopilot system integrated to the GCI control. So uh, what does that mean? Well, it means that the controller of the Air Force 
can actually control your aircraft or at least i mean this is the lazar m okay so this would be a more modern 70s version of the lazar system that the pilot could actually be the, the aircraft itself could be controlled uh, in a certain way it's kind of limited but still via a data link with the gci uh, and then the only things that the pilot would need to actually control is the radar options to actually guide the missiles if it's using the r3rs or to actually properly use the the r60s and stuff and also the engine uh, but everything else would be controlled by the gci so it is a very very old and um just very primitive data link system uh, but indeed it was there uh, you can even see on here uh, on this little uh, picture that i'm going to show to you guys that uh, you see those arrows on the top of the radar screen this would be a radar screen for the the radar basically scope for the the, the rp22 radar right of the lazur and then on top of there you can see there is like a, a arrow to the right arrow to the left and a kind of a line on the middle so one two three there uh, the one and three would mean that you need to turn to a certain uh, area and the uh, basically line would be that it's ahead of it uh, so yeah it's basically showing uh, where the pilot needs to fly being controlled by a gci as well so this is the normal azure that was uh, added for very old mig 21 from the 60s right uh, the Lazar M was obviously a little bit better and it could be controlled by um, the aircraft could be controlled by a, a GCI as I said but the principle was there you know um, obviously remember data links are not a system that you will just uh, see everything data links are basically just a quote-unquote kind of an internet connection or a data connection not internet obviously but a data connection with the aircraft with something else could be between all aircraft it could be between the gci it's just a data uh, linkage with another thing right so yeah the lazur had that to actually be controlled or be uh, helped by the gci and other things like that pretty cool right uh, in the game, uh, because this is the main thing, in the game you will notice no difference between the Lazur and the normal MiG-21Bs for the Soviets or the Finnish one. Uh, for the Saul version and the Lazur, you will see the uh, basically the SPS-141 pod being replaced by the ASO-2 flare pod. So it's basically just the flares that are different. Uh, the weight is not even different in the files. So yeah guys, basically this is it. And yeah, I make sure to subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like this type of video, talking a little bit about the differences between aircraft or something like that. And I see you guys on the next one. Okay, subscribe and bye guys. See you.